Heavenly Savior on this afternoon. And let's just set the atmosphere right quick. Let's just go ahead and honor God and worship Him. Come on, let's just lift our voices if you know He's worthy.
Praise the Lord, everybody. Truly, indeed, it's a blessing to be in the house of the Lord once again. Truly, we give honor unto God. We give praise unto God. We honor God today for this blessed day, because truly this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice, and we will be glad in it. Uh, let me do roll call. First of all, let's, let's bless God for Minister Joshua for the praise and worship today. We thank God for him. It was truly awesome. And before I even give roll call, I want to thank God for Pastor George Fleetwood, Minister Josh, Minister Juan, and Brother San Juan uh, Johnson for the concert on Sunday. I'm telling you, God really used him in a mighty way. And that was a professional concert. It was an awesome concert. And if you know you enjoyed that concert, how about go ahead and give him a, give God a praise, give him a shout out by way of Facebook. Hallelujah. Give him a round of applause just for the shout out, just for the uh, concert. I thought it was awesome. God really, uh, God really used him in a mighty and a profound way. And I was glad to be able to witness what God had did in the midst of them. Tonight, uh, let me do roll call. We want to thank God tonight for uh, leadership. Of course, we start with Pastor George Fleetwood, co-pastor of Victory Tabernacle Bible Training Center. And then we want to bless God for our elders, Elder Sheila Jackson, uh, Elder Elaine Bonaparte. We want to thank God for Minister Brad Bristow and Minister Avery Lagon. We want to thank God for Minister Jawan, Minister Joshua, and Minister Arnisha Fleetwood. Thank God for Minister uh, Sheree Eli and Minister Jennifer Singletary. Thank God for the deacons, Deacon Lee and Deaconess Brenda Savage. Thank God for them. Uh, we thank God for our other leadership, Sister Jamaica Hemingway, Sister Jackie Mason, and Brother Brandon and Sister Jasmine Morrison, we bless God for the leadership of Victory Tabernacle and all the other saints and friends of Victory Tabernacle. Listen, I'm not going to be before you long. We're going to go right into the word of the Lord on tonight. Listen, uh, from the start of this year, we have been teaching on 12 ways to develop the ear of the Lord, 12 ways to develop 
to be able to hear the voice of God and develop our ear to be sensitive. And when I say our ear, you know I'm talking about our spirits. When you when you when I say developing our ear, I'm talking about being able to know the voice of God that you'll be able to hear in your spirit what God is saying uh, saying to you concerning uh, any such matter. But anyway, I want to go to two verses real fast, and I'm not going to do a quick review, but I'm going to walk through, I'm just going to name them one by one what we have covered, okay? Proverbs 20 and 12 said, The hearing ear and the seeing eye, the Lord has made even both of them. Job 42 and 5 said, I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye seeth thee. Hallelujah to God. And we talked about developing an ear of the Lord. I don't know about you, but we're living in a time and we're living in a dispensation now where we can't afford to miss God. We can't afford to not be able to know the mind of the Lord and to be able to hear clearly and distinctly the mind of the Lord for any situation or for any circumstance. We need to hear. We need to hear his voice. And tonight, I'm going to ask you, please, if you would be attentive, uh, just be attentive. If you would uh, be attentive to be able to hear, and if you listen tonight, you're going to learn something. Listen, I can't promise you that tonight is going to be exciting. I can't promise you tonight, hallelujah, that God is going to be earth-shattering. But I can promise you that if you would listen with the right attitude and with the right mindset, Hallelujah, that God will bless you on tonight. Listen, we talked about how do I develop the ear of the Lord. We talked about one, ministering to the Lord. That's number one. I'm not going into details about all this. we already done this. Number two, we talked about seeking his face and not his hand, becoming a seeker. We talked about uh, number three, the third thing that we went over and a lot of this stuff we went over extensively, listening to praise and to worship music, letting praise and worship music overtake your spirit. We talked about that. I'm not getting into that. The fourth thing that we talked about was dedicated prayer time. Hallelujah. Dedicated prayer time. That we ought to have dedicated prayer times in our life. The, the fifth thing we talked about Developing my ear. How do I develop the ear of the Lord? The fifth thing we talked about was meditation and devotion. I'm not getting into that. We already talked about that extensively on, on last week. But now that brings us up to number five. Number five. And that is, medi number five is, say what God is saying. How can I develop the ear of the Lord? How can I know what God is saying unto me? We've got to learn to say and bring into our hearing, we've got to be able to say what God is saying. But let's look at Romans 10 and 10. The Bible said, for what the heart man believeth. Listen, there's a lot of stuff in here from Romans 10, 10 and 10 through 17. Listen, I'm just going to pull out what I need, okay? Hallelujah. I could go through this and we could teach a three-week lesson on this. But I'm just pulling out what I need. I don't want you to think, Pastor, missing something. No, I'm not missing anything. I'm just pulling out what I need, okay? Romans 10 and 10, so for with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Confession is made unto deliverance. Confession is made unto healing. Confession is made unto prosperity. Confession is made unto riches. You've got to understand, uh, hallelujah to God, we've got to learn to say what God is saying. We've got to make sure, well, Pastor, how do I know? How is it that I'll know what God is saying? The Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. How do I know what God is saying? I know what God is saying because I'm going to study my Bible. And not only did he tell me to study, but he said, give attendance to reading. Hallelujah to God. I'm going to read my Bible and I'm going to know what God is saying. I've got to study the Bible. I've got to read the Bible so I know what God is saying. I've got to learn to rehearse the word in my hearing. 
the more we say what God is saying, the more we will develop the ear of the Lord. We've got to learn to get into the habit of saying what God's saying. The Bible talks about the confession of faith in Romans 10 and 10. He said, with the mouth, with the mouth. I know with the heart we got to believe, hallelujah, but with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. He's talking about the confessions of faith. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation, unto healing, unto deliverance, so on and so forth. And the word confess here means I confer, I align, I endorse, I publicly agree, I speak the same thing. Hallelujah to God. So somebody said, what does God sound like? We've got to make sure, hallelujah to God, and understand that God sounds like his word. I believe it is Isaiah 8 and 18 when Isaiah said, Behold, I and the children whom the Lord give me, they are for signs and they are for wonders in Israel, from the Lord of hosts which dwelleth in Mount Zion. And he said, watch this, watch this. And when they say unto me, seek unto them with a familiar spirit and unto a wizard that peep and mutter. He said, when they tell me, go seek a familiar spirit, go to the witch doctor, go, go see Madam X, Z, or Y. He tell them, hallelujah to God. He said, to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to his word, it is because there is no light in him. Hallelujah to God. This is how you know that it's God. If it don't speak according to the word, it is not God. If it's not according to the word, you'll know this is not God. God is not speaking. If somebody comes and prophesy and speak the word over the God, word, the word of the Lord over your life and it does not line up, it is not in alignment with the word of God, you can honestly say this was not God. If something comes to your mind and it does not line up, it is not in agreement with the word of God. You can honestly say unequivocally, this was not God. I heard a voice, but it wasn't God. How do you know, Pastor, it don't line up with his word? So, Pastor, what does God sound like? He sounds like his word. The Bible, I think it is in Romans 10 and 17, hallelujah to God. After he gives a whole excerpt from Romans 10 down to 17, I don't have time to do the whole excerpt. He says, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You've got to understand, hallelujah to God. We've got to speak what God is speaking. We've got to continue to say what God is saying. It is our confession of faith that identifies the believer. It is the confession of faith that sets boundaries in the life of the believer. You remember this. You will never have more than your confession. It is the confession of faith that helps take over our psyche. It is the confession of faith, hallelujah to God, that helps open up our spirit so we can hear from the Lord. Hallelujah. You've got to confess who he is. Hallelujah. He is the most high God. He is the king of glory. He is the pride of Jacob. He is Lord of lords. He is king of kings. He is the Lord our banner. He is the one who inhabits in eternity. He is the ancient of days. He is the first and the last. He is Alpha and Omega. You've got to speak about him what God Hallelujah says about himself. You have got to learn to agree with God. And not only do you got to learn to agree with God, he says, hallelujah to God. The Bible said you got to confess what God says about you. He said you're more than a conqueror through him that love you. You've got to confess that. I have received the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of Jesus. The eyes of my heart is in enlightened, so I may know the hope hallow, of having life in Christ Jesus. I have the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. I have the mind of Christ. I am holy and without blame before him in love. I am born of God, and the evil one 
does not touch me. I am free from the law of sin and death. You've got to say what God is saying. You've got to learn to speak the word. And when we speak the word, when we confess the word, and that word enters into our hearing, it opens up our spirit to be able to hear the mind of the Lord. It helps us develop the ear of the Lord. I'm a new creature in Christ. Old things are passed away. I am joined heir with Christ. Yes, sir. I have everything I need. I live a godly life. And I am quick to live in his divine nature. Hallelujah. You've got to say, I am. You've got to say, hallelujah to God. I am the head and not the tail. I only go up and not down in life as I trust and obey God. It is when you make the right confession. Hallelujah. It is when you enter into your hearing. Hallelujah. I am blessed. I am rich. I am healed. I am delivered. I am set free. God has translated me from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. That sounds like God. You've got to say what God is saying. Hallelujah. It opens up our spirit to be able to hear from the Lord. It is confession of faith that sharpens our senses to be able to hear from the Lord. The Bible, that's why the Bible tells us, hallelujah to God. I'm going to read it. You don't have to turn there. The Bible tells us in Hebrews 10 and 35, he said, cast not away your confidence, which have great recompense of reward. You have need of patience after you've done the will of God that you might receive the promise. For yet a little while, he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Hallelujah. He tells us don't cast it away. I don't care how bad the situation is. You keep talking like God. The Bible said death and life is in the power of the tongue. I know you may be laying there. Hallelujah. Everybody may be calling you sick. The doctor may call you sick. But hallelujah. You said with this stripes I'm already healed. You've got to speak the word and speak the word only. Hallelujah to God. I will not let it come out of my mouth. I am defeated. I will not let it come out of my mouth that I'm sick. I will not let it come out of my mouth that I'm bound. Hallelujah to God. Come on here. I've got to learn to say what God is saying. And when I say what God is saying, it will open up my, open up my spirit. It will open up my ear to be able to hear clearly the mind of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is the confession of faith that set, sets boundaries in the life of the believer. I told you before, you'll never have more than your confession. It is the confession of faith. You cannot advance beyond your confession. You cannot advance beyond your confession. Hallelujah. It is, it is the confession of faith. Hallelujah. Let's look at Mark 11 and 23. Once again, I don't want everything in here. I don't, I just want to pick out what I need because I got, I want to move on. I want to cover a lot of ground. Look what they say in Mark 11 and 3. Verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say, say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast in the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe those things which he saith, which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Whatever he says is going to happen. It's going to emerge. It's going to come into being. It's going to transition from one point to another, from one realm to another, from one condition to another. Hallelujah to God. Listen, divine's concordance implies, hallelujah, when you begin to speak, hallelujah, and confess and say what God is saying, I dare you to agree with God. I dare you, hallelujah, to God, to go against the grain of your flesh, go against the grain of your emotion, go against the grain of this world system, and I dare you to say what God is saying. And what Vine said, when you do that, it implies motion, it implies movement, and it implies growth. Hallelujah to God. It tells me that most something is happening. You're setting something in motion. It tells me, hallelujah, that 
that movement is taking place. It tells me that growth is taking place. Hallelujah. May not have a dime in my pocket, but I am rich. Hallelujah to God. May can't even get out of bed, but I am healed. I am delivered. I am set free. I'm going to say what God has said. Oh God, our faith is held in bondage. Because we never forget, we never confess who we are in Christ. We've got to confess who we are. Not only who we are, but whose we are. And not just whose we are, but what we have. Hallelujah to God. We've got to confess who Christ is and what he's already done. I know we got to first believe it in our, in our heart. And then we got to confess it with our mouth. We got to believe it. We got to confess it. And then we can receive it. We've got to practice a lifestyle and an exercise of rehearsing God's word in our hearing until it take over our psyche and becomes a part of us. The Bible, watch this. I'm going to throw something at you. I'm going to throw something at you. I'm going I'm to throw something at you. Hallelujah to God. I'm going to throw something at you. I don't think you ever heard it quite on this fashion before, but, uh, but I'm, but I'm going to throw something at you. This is one of what I'm going to throw at you. The Bible said, how can they hear without a preacher? How can they hear without a preacher? Let me tell you something. Preaching to me opens up my ear to hear God. How can they hear without a preacher? I've got to learn to preach to me. I've got to learn to preach to me. When things look down, when things look gloom, when it looks like things are not going to get better, I've got to preach to myself. i got to say to myself, how many are the afflictions of the righteous? Hallelujah. Oh, God, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver me. How of them all I've got to preach to me. Hallelujah. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. How can they hear without a preacher? Hallelujah to God. I've got to learn to preach to me. Oh, God, I pray you, I can hear without a preacher. When I preach to me, when I preach to me, it opens up our ears to hear God. When I preach the word of God, when I take that word of God and preach it back to me, hallelujah to God. Listen, somebody said, man, pastor really preached. He really preached Sunday, but I want to know, did you preach it back to you? Hallelujah to God. Come on here. Pastor really preached, man. It was a mini sermon, but my God, I tell you, the word was good to me. Hallelujah to God. I'm telling you, he he really preached. Hallelujah to God. He won't up that long, but what he preached, he said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He told me I should, there's no need to perish. And you know what? Hallelujah. I've been perishing, but you know what? I made up in my mind I'm not going to perish, but have everlasting life. Pastor, really preach. That's good, Pastor. Preach. Now I preach to you. You got to preach to yourself. You got to preach to yourself I'm healed. You got to preach to yourself I'm set free. You got to preach to yourself I'm delivered. You got to preach to yourself I'm the head and not the tail. When you preach to yourself, you are saying what God has already said. You got to rehearse the words of your pastor. You got to repeat. Stop looking. Hallelujah. You're looking for something fresh. I'm looking for something new. I'm looking for something exciting. Let me tell you something. It is not the freshness. It is not the freshness, the newness, or the excitement that's going to take you over the top. But it is the mundane. It is that word that seems like it's putting you to sleep. It is that word that seems like it's boring. It is that word. Hallelujah. That looks like hallelujah. It's not making you jump off the pew. It is that word that's going to give you growth. It is that spinach that's going to give you growth. It is that coll it's the collard greens that's going to give you growth. It is the meat that's going to give you growth. It is the rice that's going to give you growth. It is the beans that's going to give you growth. Hallelujah to God. The pie and the cake is not going to give you growth. The candy is not going to give you growth. Sometimes it is the boring and the mundane. Hallelujah. Pat to put me to sleep. Hallelujah to God. You better get up. 
Because you got some devils and demons you're fighting. You got some generational curses you're fighting. You got some spirits hanging on you that fight. You can't afford to go to sleep. You can't afford. Got to rehearse the word. Let me tell you something. When we speak against God, we are not developing the ear of the Lord. When we speak life and come into agreement with God, we are developing, watch this, y'all, not just the mouth of the Lord, but the ear of the Lord. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. I got to move. That's number six. Say what God is saying. Number seven, turn to James 1 and 21. James 1, 21. And I'm going to read all the way to verse 25. Lay apart all filthiness and superfluity and naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save and deliver your soul. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any man be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is likened to a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. Pastor, how do I develop the ear of the Lord? I can't afford to miss God. I can't afford not to hear clearly and distinctly what God is saying. How do I do it? Hallelujah. You've got to learn to become a doer and not just a hearer. Hallelujah. You've got to become a doer of the word of the Lord. How do I become a doer of the word of the Lord? The Bible said to receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your soul. You've got to receive the word and you've got to receive it with meekness. Uh, hallelujah to God. You've got to. Hallelujah to God. You've got to, the Bible to receive means to actively lay hold onto it. Uh, you've got to lay hold of every word. Every wall word that falls from the lips of your pastor, that fall from the lips of the elders, that fall from the lips of the ministers. Ha, you've got to lay hold on to it. Huh? Hallelujah. You should be able to tell somebody what your pastor preached backward and frontward and frontward and backward. You know why? Because I laid hold to it. Huh? I can't afford to go to sleep. I can't afford uh, the new the snooze and hallelujah that God, the snooze and to get restless. Hallelujah, you got to receive the word. You got to lay hold to it. Huh? Hallelujah that God, you got to receive the word. The Bible said, come on here, receive with meekness, then graft the word. And that word is able to deliver your soul deliver your carnal mind, deliver your earthly mind, deliver your mind that is full of generational curses and full of holler ideas and hallelujah to God and full of all kind of mess, harsh and images that go against the word of God but it's able to deliver your soul, able to deliver your mind, able to rescue and to save your mind. Don't just listen with your natural ears. Hallelujah to God. He said, don't be just a hearer, but be a doer of the word. We've got to get to the point. Hallelujah to God. Where we, ha, God, I praise you that we ha, are doers of of the word. Uh, don't just listen, but you've got to be a doer. Listen, this is going to mess you up here. Uh, oh, Lord Jesus. I'm, I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm going to get into it later. I'm going to come back to it later. But to be a doer, you need to look that word up in the uh, in the Greek and that word doer when you, I'm not going to tell you that what the, what the Greek word means. I'm going to just tell you the definition. The definition for that word doer, how to look up strong, in Strong's Concordance. That word doer means to be a performer, a cat Outer. It means to be a poet. I'm going to get back to that. A poet and a producer. God just don't want us to be a hearer. He don't want us to just listen. Hallelujah. We just listen it and act like we enjoying the word and running around and hallelujah, running around the church and falling out. Hallelujah to God. And we just listening, but we ain't doing nothing. Hallelujah. We just listen. The Bible said we deceive ourselves. We beguile ourselves. We mislead ourselves. We distort ourselves. God, the Bible 
said when he said we deceive ourselves, we have a distorted reasoning. We did not get out of the word what we should have got out of. Somewhere down the line between the word and your mind, the transference of the word and your mind, there was a distorted reasoning. Somewhere down the line, the word was good, but somewhere it got distorted that you didn't believe you had to carry it forth. Hallelujah to God. Pastor Fleetwood, I tell you, oh God, I pray you. Minister Josh, he really ministered that word last week. That word on hell, I tell you, mm 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 mm. How, but you hadn't done anything about it. You know why? Because you heard it. Hallelujah, but you're not a doer. How, and the only thing you did was deceive yourself. You beguiled your own self. The devil had nothing to do with it. You misled your own self. You had distorted reasoning. Lord, help me, Jesus. He said, don't just be a hearer, but be a doer, be a producer. What are you producing? Hallelujah to God. Ah, oh, God, I praise you. We've got to become doers. And when we become doers of the word, our spirits will become open to hear the voice of the Lord. If any man, and he gives us a, a nice illustration here. He said, if any man be a hearer of the word and not a door, he is likened to a man beholding his natural face in a glass. He behold himself and goeth his way and straight we forget it. What manner of man he was. I just want to know this. How many of y'all will go and look in the mirror and you look in the mirror and you can see hallelujah to God. You got soap marks all over your face. Hallelujah bitch. That's a very sorry person to don't wipe it off. How many of y'all can go look in the mirror and you put lotion on your face but you didn't rub it in good and you leave it just like that. How many of y'all will look in the mirror and see you got sleep and crud and crust all in your eyes and you don't do nothing about it. How many of y'all will look and see Hallelujah, you got toothpaste, pull, toothpaste pulling out the side of your mouth and you don't do nothing about it. How many of y'all will look and got a peasy head and don't brush your head, don't comb your head, don't do nothing about it. Hallelujah, they got, come on here. The same way we look in a natural mirror. Some of us, we can't go an hour. We can't go 30 minutes without looking in the mirror. Some of us in church, pop out the little mirror. Some of us got mirrors right there in our pocketbook. We got mirrors, hallelujah, mirrors all over the house. Just mirrors everywhere. Hallelujah to God. You know why? Because we are concerned about how the natural man looks. But God said, listen here. Hallelujah. When the word of God is coming forth, you're looking in the mirror. It is not a time to doze off. It is not a time to go to sleep. It is not a time to be bored. But it's a time to see yourself. I get a chance to see me for who I am. This is who I am. Hallelujah to God. Come on here. The mirror shows me who I am. How many of y'all know last week when Minister Josh were talking about hallelujah to God, he was talking about how our eating habits. He was talking about morality. He was talking about possessing our vessels in sanctification. He was talking about hallelujah to God, how to possess our vessels even when it comes to our eating habits. And don't let anything foul enter into our body, smoking and drinking and drugs and hallelujah. Hallelujah to God. Come on here. And after that word, if we went back to the same kind of that same kind of life, eating till we can't eat no more, eating, hallelujah, till we about to bust. Hallelujah to God. Raising our blood pressure. God are taking high di diabetes. Ain't trying to do nothing. Hallelujah to God. The doctor said you need to lose 40 pounds and you gain, you done gain four since the message. You know why? Because you heard the word but you didn't do it. Nothing has changed. You're still eating the same. You're still living the same. Nothing has changed. But God want to know when are you going to become a performer? Hallelujah to God. Come on here. The word hit you in the mouth about your attitude. The word hit you in the mouth about your jealousy. The word hit you in the mouth about your rebellion. When are you going to change? When are you going to, ain't you tired of just being a listener? Ain't you tired, hallelujah, after church, saying, Pat, you stepped on my toe. Pat, that word was for me. All oh, that's good. Pastor, man, mm, what a word. Mm, mm, mm. All oh, that's good. But when are you going to do it? 
Hallelujah. Don't just listen with our natural ears. Don't just listen and deceive ourselves, beguile ourselves, mislead ourselves. And somewhere between the pulpit and the pews, somewhere between Facebook and your house, from my house to your house, there was distorted reasoning. You're called to be doers, not just hearers only. The more we become doers of the word of God, it will open up our spirits. Hallelujah. I don't know about y'all, but I looked in the mirror and I seen who I am. I seen who I was and I didn't like what I saw and I needed to change. Thank God for the word. That's why David said that word. Hallelujah. I don't want to get to that. I need that scripture for something else. Hallelujah. It is the mirror of the word. When I look into the mirror of the word, I see myself. Hallelujah to God. Come on here. The Bible said, come on here. When you are a hearer of the word and not a doer, it's like a man beholding himself in a natural face in a glass. He beholding himself, go this way and forget what man of man he was. You forgot there was toothpaste on the side of your mouth. You forgot you had crust and crud all in your eye. You forgot, hallelujah, you didn't rub the lotion all the way in. You forgot that your head was napping. You forgot that your head need coma. You forgot, hallelujah, to God, that your makeup was running. You forgot. You saw yourself and you forgot. You said to yourself, this is not important. You saw the jealousy. The word of God revealed to you that you were jealous. That jealousy lived within your camp. And you saw yourself, but it did not matter. You saw that you had unforgiveness in your heart. You saw that you had a rebellious spirit. You saw it. The mirror of God's word let you see yourself. Hallelujah. But you forgot who you were. You overlooked it. You failed to notice it. You neglected it. It wasn't important. You forgot it. But the Bible said, watch this, y'all. He said, hallelujah to God. He said, but look at verse 25. He said, but whoso, I don't care who you are, look at them to the perfect law of liberty, the word of the Lord, and continue thereof. Hallelujah to God. Come on here. Come on. What are you saying? He's got, going back to what I said in Romans. He's telling you, how can he hear without a preacher? You done heard the first preacher. You done heard the first sermon. Now, how many know you got to preach it back to you? You got to rehearse it back to you. He said, whosoever look at them to the perfect law of liberty and continue therein. I got to go back and rehearse what my pastor taught. I got to go back and rehearse what the elders taught. I got to go back and look over what the ministers taught. I got to look into the perfect law of liberty. Hallelujah. And continue therein. And stay there. He said, and look, and he said, and being not a forgetful hearer. But look, uh, let me tell you what the word look at mean. He said, but whosoever looketh, that word looketh, y'all want to know that word look? Go, go, and go back to the Greek. Go back to the Greek. Go back to your strong concordance. That word looketh, can I tell you what it means? It means to stoop to look. It means to stoop down sideways to look. It means to look down, to look intently into the perfect law of liberty. Come on, tell your neighbor, you got to put your foot in it. You got to come on here. You got to be all in it. You got to stoop down. You got to look sideways, look down. Hallelujah to God. You got to look all in the word of God and continue right there. Said, Pastor, I was in the Old Testament. I was in the New Testament. Pastor, I was trying to figure this thing out. Hallelujah. I was trying to dig deep down into the word of the Lord. I know you gave us the skeleton, but I wanted to put more meat in it. I was looking down in it, Pastor, because I wanted to be delivered. I didn't just want to be a hero. But I wanted to be a doer. Being not a forgetful hearer, you're not living in oblivion. You're not living in neglect. But he is a doer of the work. Tell your neighbor the word comes to give us work. 
whether you know it or not, when the word come, it is not some beautiful assignment. When the word of God come, it is just not some beautiful message. It is not something just to jump up and down and say, man, that was a beautiful message. Man, he, he. It, no, 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 no. The word comes to give you work. It is the word. When the word comes, it comes with an assignment and it comes to give you work. He said, but a doer of what? A doer of the work. The word comes to give you work. Well, the word calls for work. Make sure you understand. And when he said a doer, you've got to be a performer, a carry out. He got, you've got to be a poet. You've got to be a producer, a poet. What do you mean a patu, a poet? You've got to continue. As you begin to do the word, you are a poet. You begin to write on the hearts of men by doing the word. When you do the word, when you work the word and do the word, you are becoming God's poet. Hallelujah to God. You are God's reading epistle and you are read and known of all men. Hallelujah to God. Tell you I'm God's poet. Hallelujah to God. And I let somebody know by looking at my life. Hallelujah to God. They was able to read off of me that I don't have to live like this. They was able to read off of me that God is a deliverer. That God is a savior. That God will sanctify you. That God will deliver you. Hallelujah. How do you know God delivers you? I was looking at Brother Ronnie on the job. I read him. Hallelujah to God. He came and he lived the life that was like a poet. Hallelujah to God. Come on here. Hallelujah to God. He was a producer. He was producing the holiness of God. He was producing the righteousness of God. He was a doer. When you become a doer, you become a producer of the things of God. People can see. Hallelujah. Not just the word of God, but the word of God that jumps off the pages and into to your life and you become the written word. Jesus said, Lo, I come in the volume of the books to do thy will. Hallelujah. What are you writing? Poet, what are you writing at work? What are you writing at home? What are you writing on the job? What are you writing amongst your, among the children? If you were just a hearer of the word of God only, you haven't even picked up your pen yet. Your pen is still laying down. God is saying it's time to become my poet. Come, time to become my deliverer. Time to become, come on here, to become the word. He said this man will be blessed in all his deeds. One that is happy to be envied. Because of a conference of God's favor. And it also means he will become long and large. Now, Pastor, how would you tie this in? How would you tie this in with hearing developing my ear? I want to show you something. Turn. I want you to turn to Ezekiel 12 and 2. And I'm finna tie it in. I'm finna tie it in. Watch this. I'm going to tie it in. Ezekiel 12 and 2. It says, it says, Son of man, thou dwelleth in the midst of a rebellious house. How do you know the house is rebellious? How do you know that the house is in a rebellious stage, which have eyes to see and see not? They have ears to hear and hear not. They are a rebellious house. Hallelujah. How, how can I open up my ears to hear the word of the Lord. How can I open up my and develop the ear of the Lord? The way I develop the ear of the Lord is by becoming a doer of the word of the Lord. He's telling us here, they got ears, but they're not able to hear. They're not able to hear because they're not doers. They are rebellious. Tell your neighbor, just do it. Pastor, do I got to do that? Just do it. Pastor, how come? Just do it. Just do it. Tell your neighbor, just do it. Yes, sir. In Luke 11, Luke 11, Luke 11, in verse 28, Jesus said, well, I'm going to back up. 
Hallelujah to God. And it came to pass. I'm going to look at verse 27. Luke 11 and 27. It came to pass. He spake these things. A certain woman of the company lifted up her voice and said, Blessed is the womb that bare thee. She's talking to Jesus. And the past where thou hast sucked. But Jesus said, but he said, yea, rather. He said, and you want to know who blessed? Blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. He said, that's who blessed. You want to know who, who the, the blessing of the Lord is on? Those are the one that hear the word of the Lord and keep it. They hear the word and keep it. They hear the word and that word keep me. I keep, I guard, I watch over, I secure the word with vigilance. David said, that word have I hid in my heart. This is what I want now, that I might not sin against God. You know, watch this, y'all. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not miss God. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not miss God. I want to hear clearly from God, and I don't want to hear, I don't want to miss him. And that's why I safeguard. I become a doer. I become a producer. I become a poet of the word of God. Poetry in motion. Hallelujah. How come on the job you are not in all the women's face? How come on the job you don't be cursing? How come on the job you do everything the boss tell you? Tell your neighbor, poetry in motion. I'm a poet. I'm a doer of the word of God. I am poetry in motion. I am God's poet. Oh, God, I praise your name. Well, I thought that was good. Hallelujah. He said, David said, that word have I hid in my heart. Have I treasured up in my heart that I might not miss God. I can't afford to miss him. God tell me to go right and I go left. God tell me to go straight and I back up. I can't afford to miss God. That's why, hallelujah, I must become a doer of the word of God. I can't afford to miss God. Doer of the work. Our producers, hallelujah to God. The Bible said, hallelujah to God. I think it's Mark, Mark 4 and 20, I think it is. The Bible said, this is what I want. The Bible said, these are they. I ain't got time to run through all of them. He said, but these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit, some 34, some 60, and some 100. Hallelujah. That these are they which are sown on good ground. They hear the word and they receive it. They listen and comprehend Holiday here and accept and receive and acknowledge. It means to welcome with personal interest. And when I welcome the word with personal interest, I bring forth fruit to be fertile and to be productive. Hallelujah. Doers of the work are producers and they are hungry for God. Turn to Acts 10. I want to show you something. I want to show you something in Acts 10. Oh God, I praise your name. Let's go to Acts. Book of Acts. Hope y'all enjoying this word today. Hallelujah. I don't know if you enjoying it as much as me giving it. Because I'm enjoying giving it. Acts 10 and 9. Hallelujah to God. I'm going to read the whole story. I don't really need to, but I'm going to read it. On the morrow, as they went on their journey and drew nigh to the city, Acts 10 and 9, Peter went up on the housetop to pray about the sixth hour, and he became hungry and he would have eaten. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance, and he saw heaven open and a certain vessel descend upon him as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners and let down to the earth, wherein with all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth, wild beasts, creeping things, and fowls of the air. And there came a voice to him saying, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. Peter said, Not so, Lord. I've never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice spoke to him again the second time, said, Well, God is clean, that calls thou not common. This was done three times, and the vessel was received up into heaven. So now God was trying to 
give Peter an analogy that I'm getting ready to open up my plan of salvation to the Gentiles. Watch this. Look at verse 17. Now, while Peter doubted in himself what this vision, which he had seen, should mean, Peter had no understanding what it meant. Behold, men were sent from Cornelius, had made inquiry for Simon's house, and stood be before the gate, and called and asked whether Simon, which was surnamed Peter, was lodged there. And while Peter, thinking about the vision, <clears throat> the Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. Now here Peter has to have the ear of the Lord. He, he had to be a producer. He had to be a doer of the word of God. He had to be a confessor of the word of God. Because the spirit said, behold, three men seek thee. Arise, get thee down. Go with them. Don't you doubt nothing, for I sent them. If Peter would have missed God, God would have had to use somebody else to go to Cornelius' house and open up his plan of salvation for the Gentiles. But thanks be unto God that Peter had developed the ear of the Lord. He had opened up his spirit. His spirit was open to receive a word from the Lord, to receive direction from the Lord. Let me tell you something. We're living in a time now, hallelujah to God. I don't know about y'all, but I need to hear clearly and distinctly from the Lord. I need to watch this, y'all. This is something God gave me today. I never heard it like this before. I don't need a fuzzy, grainy word from the Lord. I don't need it to be funny and fuzzy and grainy. But I need to hear from God in high definition. I need to hear from God in 4K. I truly believe that there's a place in God where we can hear from God in HD. I truly believe there's a place in God we can hear from God in 4K. And he told Peter, come on here. He said, there's three men out there. They're seeking you. Arise, get thee down. Go with them. Don't you doubt nothing. These are three strangers. And hallelujah. The Holy Ghost said, I sent them. But his spirit was open to receive. And y'all know the rest of the story, ain't you? We ain't got time to go through the rest of the story. Peter went, and God used him to bring salvation. God used him to bring salvation. How many people have God beckoned you to to go bring salvation to? How many people have God told you to go witness to, but you miss God? You couldn't hear his voice clearly. Your ear was not developed to hear, to hear him clearly. We need to hear God in high definition. Look what he said in Acts 8, 26. Turn there real fast. Look at Acts 26. He said, and the angel of the Lord spake unto Simon and said, Arise and go toward the south unto the way that go down from Jerusalem to Gaza, which is, which is desert, desert. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch, of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had charge over all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem. He come there to worship and was returning and sitting on his chariot. He began to read Isaiah the prophet. And then the spirit said unto Philip, go near, go join yourself to the chariot. And Philip ran thither, and he began to ask a man, do you read what you understand? Do you read? Can you read in the prophet? He said, do you understand what you read? He said, how can I accept some man guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. And we know, hallelujah, that God, that Philip began to preach Jesus to him. We know that Philip began to preach Jesus unto him. Hallelujah to God. And not only did he preach Jesus to him, but he led him to Christ and he baptized him. Hallelujah. What if Philip had missed God? Well, if Philip's ear was an open to God, These two were doers of the work. They were producers. They were God's poets. They were hungry for God. I need to be able to hear from the Lord.
can't afford to miss God. And since I can't miss God, I can't afford not to say what he, I need to say what he's saying. Whatever's God saying, that's what I need to say. I need to speak the word only. Don't let it come out of your mouth. I'm, I'm po. We so po. I'm so thick. I, I ain't gonna never. I ain't gonna never. I ain't gonna never get this. I ain't gonna never get that. I ain't gonna never. Never, never, never. Living in Neverland. I ain't gonna never. That is not what God said. I'll never be able to do it. I'll never come out the hole. i never. i never. That is not what God said. You gotta say what God is saying. You got to learn to become doers of the word. And when you become doers of the word, you understand with the word comes work. With the word comes the responsibility of being a producer and being a poet. Poetry in motion. The word in action. Lights, camera, action. The word in action. I can't afford Miss God. Hallelujah. I just gave you six and seven. I'm going to cut it off. As bad as I want to go to number eight. Man, I tell you, we're going to get through this. I might need about two more, two more, two more lessons. But we're going to get, we're going to get through this, okay? We don't cover seven. I'll do a brief review of all seven in case this is somebody for your first time. I'm not going to talk about all seven. I'm just going to read. We have been talking about 12 ways to develop the ear of the Lord, opening up our spirits to hear from the Lord. And I need to hear from God in high definition. I need to hear from God. Hallelujah to God in 4K. Is that all right? Number one is minister to the Lord. Number two, seek his face and not his hand. Hallelujah. Number three, listen to praise and worship music. Number four, dedicated prayer time. Number five, meditation and devotion. Number six, say what God is saying. And number seven, learning to become doers of the word, doers of the work, to becoming producers and poets, and not just simply hearers of the word. Next week, we're going to pick it off, pick it up with number eight. And number eight is to be still before the Lord. Maybe we'll be able to get eight and nine in. Number eight is to be still before the Lord. Be still. Number eight, be still before the Lord. I'm not going to go into that because if I go into that, that's another 30 something minutes. And while we I want to cut this thing off at a, at, a, at a good and a reasonable time. Let me say this by way of announcements. Uh, don't forget. Don't forget. Don't forget. That uh, we'll be ministering on Sunday. And listen, if the weather holds up and everything is fine, we'll be having parking lot service the first Sunday in January. The first Sunday in January. The weather holds up and everything is fine. We'll come back together as a church family the first Sunday in January. Okay? Don't forget, on this coming Sunday, we'll be having service. Now, write this down for the schedule for next week. Don't forget, y'all. Give your sacrificial seed for the end of the year offering. And if you look at your flyers, if you look at the bulletin that were passed out, it will tell you what the amount is that each uh, member is supposed to be given for that year in service. You'll see what that seed is. And let's give that last seed. And you can give it Sunday. You can give it uh, the following week. I don't, it doesn't matter to me. But listen, listen to me good, okay? Listen to me good by way of announcement. Listen to me good. Don't forget we'll be having service on Sunday. And then next week, the week after that, We'll be having service. We are going to have Bible study on Wednesday since it's virtual. If it was in person, I wouldn't have us going out Wednesday and Thursday. But since it's virtual, we will have service virtual Wednesday. 
There will be service Thursday at the church. It will be virtual to you, but we will be at the church at 7.15 for New Year's night service. If anybody want to bring their seed Sunday, bring it with that Thursday, it does not matter. And then hopefully that Sunday, the first Sunday in the New Year, we'll be coming together. But until then, you, you'll be in a Zoom. We'll be in a Zoom meeting, and we're going to break it up in sections. It won't be the whole church in one section in a Zoom meeting. And we'll go over the fast and the pledges for the New Year and what is expected of us going into the New Year, okay? Listen, I got to go. I hope somebody got something out of the Word tonight. I hope you receive something out of the Word tonight that will change your life and elevate your life. But listen, we got to go. Somebody asked a question, is there any word from the Lord? I want you to know that yes, there's a word from the Lord. And do me a favor, continue to pray for the Jackson family. For Continue to pray for the Jackson family. They lost their grandmother. Hallelujah. She passed away this past week. So continue to keep them in prayer. May God be with you. And may the grace of God smile upon you. Be blessed.